everyone, welcome back to Premier State Investing. Today we're going to be looking at the tricky, tricky issue of adjusted closes and how they work. And essentially, I'm trying to answer the question, if I calculate my returns using the adjusted close, then afterwards, should I come back and add in any dividend yield that I had? The answer is if you use the adjusted close here, you would not want to add in any dividend yield on top of your returns. Now this can be a little bit confusing, but let me just say, suppose that I calculate my adjusted close, I take my adjusted closes, I calculate my returns, I get 10% a year, and my stock pays a 5% dividend. I would not want to take 10% plus 5% and say, okay, then the annual is 15. Okay, that's just an example. Sometimes the problem in finance is that you run across the problem of words and people's ability to communicate using written language when they're trying to talk about uh, math. And if they don't give you all the details, then you can walk away leaving, feeling a little confused. For example, this Investopedia article, that's about calculating the adjusted close price. It says when distributions are made, so dividends, the adjusted close price calculations are simple. For cash dividends, the value of the dividend is deducted from the last closing sale price of the stock. Okay, for example, let's assume that the closing price for one share of XYZ Corp is $20 on Thursday. After the close on Thursday, XYZ Corp announces a dividend distribution of $1.50 per share. The adjusted closing price for the stock would then be $18.50, which is the $20 less the $1.50 paid out in dividends per share. So when I read this, here's how I read it, and it's completely wrong, okay? But I just want you to know that this is could happen to you. Say you invested $10.00. And the stock goes to, it tells you, it went to 20 on the close, right? Meaning you made how much? 100%, right? And then it tells us that the adjusted close would give us 1850, right? Now, using this logic, I'm thinking, okay, well, in that case, then I made 85% if I was to calculate my adjusted close. And I need my other 15% in order to match what I would have gotten if we were using the unadjusted numbers, right? These should be the same. We're just uh, manipulating the numbers, but it doesn't work like this. It does not work like this. And I'm gonna show you why. So you can see this in other organizations, websites, adjusted closing price after dividend payout. Company ABC's closing price at the end of the day is $500. Following, the company distributes a $10 dividend per share. The corporate action will affect the closing price. Closing price. Doesn't say adjusted closing price, it says the closing price. And therefore, an adjusted closing price will be calculated. In such case, the calculation would be $500 minus the $10 equal to an adjusted close of $490. See that the adjusted close is going to be lower than the closing. And that's good. But sometimes it still leaves us a little wanting. If you go and you say, look at the history. So if we were to look at Coca-Cola, ticker KO, on Yahoo Finance, go to historical data, and we go to daily historical prices, we can go down here and we'll just look for this 42 cent dividend. Now, the interesting thing on this is the difference between 5088 and 5046 is exactly 42 cents. Say we scroll down to November 30th, 40 cent, 41 cent dividend. Well, the difference between this and this is $1.10. So the difference between this and this is 69 cents. So looking at another article from Investopedia, we can go down here, adjusting for dividends. For example, assume a company declared a dollar cash dividend and was trading at $51 per share before then. All things being equal, the price would fall to $50 because that $1 share is no longer part of the company's assets. However, the dividends are still part of the investor's return. By subtracting the dividends from the previous stock price, we obtain the adjusted close prices and a better picture of returns. So again, I read that and I'm like, okay, the close was 51, the adjusted close was 50. If I originally put in $40, then a $10 increase on a $40 investment, 25% return. Uh, 
but the close would tell me that price is 51 because we didn't change that and that'd be 27.5 so i'd still be missing my i'd still be missing and i would need to add the 2.5 percent yield here okay if that's how you're reading this you're reading it wrong and i just wanted to point that out my advice from doing this is if you can do a simple example do that if you ever like read these articles and you feel confused then just download the data and do a little bit of scratch paperwork. So if you looked at that last example, you might think, well, 25%, I need to add on a 2.5% dividend yield in order to get to my true total return. This is wrong. Okay, so here's a couple things to notice. I just went and downloaded from Yahoo the close and the adjusted close on KO. So this is Coca-Cola, same company we are just looking at. A couple things you'll notice is that the last price, this is um, the most recent price, May 1st, 2021, these are exactly the same, okay? And the simple logic, if you go back and you look at the prices, you compare it here, they're the same, here they are not the same. Which one is bigger? This one is bigger. 52.7, 52.2. All the way down, the adjusted closes are smaller, going all the way back to 44.68. So you can imagine, very simply, if you start with a lower number, and arrive at the same place, you had to travel further starting at a lower number. Obviously, like you could say, if my end price was 50, in both cases, say in two cases, and this one I started at 10, at 19, and this one I started at five, five being less than 19, which one is gonna have the greater gains? Well, obviously this one moved a lot more to get from five to 50 compared to this one start at 19. Well, that's the same kind of thing we have here. This is a higher price, this is a lower price, and they both end up at the same place. Uh, which means you do not need to add anything on to the adjusted closes in order to kind of catch up. In fact, if I do the uh, calculations here, the nominal, we'll use this because it's a little bit simpler calculation. It's just the blue one divided by the red one minus one. It gives you a 21.93% return. The adjusted close, it's going to give you 26.5. And you can see 26.5 is much larger on the adjusted close. Now I know that Coke pays about a 3.8% forward looking yield. I just pulled that off of Yahoo. In fact, if you go to the summary tab on Yahoo under Coca-Cola, you can scroll down and it'll tell you the forward dividend yield. It'll be $1.68, which is equivalent to $3, uh, three, sorry, 3.08%. 3 so I'm just gonna go back here. If I add that 3.8% in, then we're pretty, pretty close, 25.734 compared to 26.051. Again, this is a forward yield, uh, but if you do a little bit more complicated calculation using the geometric average, the numbers are a lot closer. But you can see the nominal uh, yield on the close, 21.83, and on the adjusted close, 25.5. So it's a big difference. When you add on that dividend, you're really much closer in the ballpark, 25.6 versus 25.5. So that is a lot closer if you use the adjusted closes. I just want to double check this with a couple other companies. So this is Gilead. They have a 4.32% dividend yield. And you can see the numbers are fairly close. Again, the nominal return on the close, negative 19%, the adjusted close, is higher. I mean, these are negative numbers, so when you add on the dividend, a positive number, 15.52, 15.66. These are both negatives, but you get the idea. If you use a little bit more simple, just the arithmetic, it's not quite as accurate, uh, but you're fairly close in the same ballpark. If you take this yield off, they're way off, negative 18, negative 14. Putting that yield back on, brings them a lot closer. This is Kraft Heinz, the exact same idea. We're just doing the uh, monthly on this one. You can see again, the closing numbers are the same, 41.99. And you can see going back, that the original starting price is lower on the adjusted side of things, and it's higher on the closed side of things. Meaning that the adjusted close is gonna give you a higher return. The adjusted close, the rate of return was 36. 1.5%, the nominal is only 31%. It's a difference of almost, uh, I don't know, 4.5%. You add on the dividend of 3.1%, and it's closer. It's not perfect. So I'm still a little bit like having my 
brow curled a little bit looking at this. Um, but definitely, 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 you do not want to add the dividend onto the adjusted close return, the return you get from the adjusted close. You definitely want to add it to the normal close, which means when you get your return using adjusted close numbers, just let it ride, okay? Just let it be. You don't need to add on any extra yield that came from the dividends. Okay, so if we want to understand how they make the adjustment on the adjusted close, we can look at this example. I really liked it. It says, let's look at this example. The stock closed on Monday, $40. On Tuesday, it begins trading X dividend, meaning that if you bought it on Tuesday, you would not be able to uh, expect to receive the next dividend, okay? Based on a $2 dividend. So if the stock opens unchanged, it will be trading at $38. This is a good example. Now, unless we adjust the prior prices, the chart will show a misleading $2 gap, meaning if we just ran with the closing prices, we'd all of a sudden think that something bad happened overnight. Nothing bad happened, it's just the dividend was paid out, all right? So to calculate the adjustment factor, we subtract the $2 of dividend from Monday's closing price. So the 40 minus the $2 leaves us with $38. Then you're looking for an adjustment factor. So the way they get that, they take the 38 divided by the 40 from Monday to determine the dividend adjustment in percentage terms. The result is 0.95. So then this is what they do. Lastly, we multiply all historical prices prior to the dividend by a factor of 0.95. This adjusts the historical prices proportionately so that they stay rationally aligned with the current prices. Meaning that they go back and they adjust, another article said, all historical prices. Anyway, that is the reason why all the adjusted closes are lower. When we go back, we've seen this before. All these numbers are lower. For example, we can even put in this equation this is greater than this. Okay, so the close is always greater than the adjusted close. Every point except for these two points right here. When they put this adjustment on, it lowers this number, and that's why you see a greater gain for adjusted closes. We've seen that in three companies, Coke, Kraft Heinz, and we saw it for Gilead Sciences. So I hope that helps when you go and you think, if I do this uh, historical returns using adjusted closes, which is definitely the ones you'd want to use, uh, you definitely want to use the adjusted closes because they uh, adjust for the dividend payouts and they also adjust for stock splits. Stock splits will really, really mess everything up if you, um, if you don't adjust for those. The close does not adjust for those, okay? So you can imagine if the price doubles overnight because of a stock split, the close is not going to adjust for that. It's going to look like all of a sudden uh, you hit a gold mine. You did not hit a gold mine. You have a price that's twice as high and you have half as many shares. You know, So this is um, something to think about. So you definitely want to use the adjusted close when calculating historical returns. And you definitely do not want to add on any dividend yield on top of what you already found. So again, we're back on Coke, 0.38 forward yield. Um, you know. It should ultimately have been um, a different yield, but I'm just using this as an example. It's gonna get you uh, in the ballpark. Otherwise, you have a huge difference. And I think I'm just belaboring the points uh, at this point. But I think one thing to do, a good learning takeaway, is just if you get confused reading articles with the language they use or the oversimplified examples, maybe perhaps like this oversimplified example, and there's not enough information to really get at what's going on. Uh, you need to know how the adjustments are made. Otherwise, you're left maybe feeling confused. Don't feel confused. Uh, just run a simple example if you need to. Gilead is probably the best out of the three that I've done. Just where it is really close. Uh, within like uh, less than a tenth of a percentage point off. By the time you factor in the forward dividend. So uh, I hope that helps. And uh, we'll keep doing more content like this. Best to everyone in your investing.